this is uh, America Meets the Beatles. We've been working on it for about a year and a half. It started off with discussions with Bill Eckridge, the life photographer who covered Vietnam, the 1968 election. He was the guy that took the picture of Bobby Kennedy lying on the floor of the Ambassador Hotel. He was at Woodstock, uh, and of course, he covered the Beatles for life. Um, so we were talking to him, thought that it would be a good idea to do a Beatles exhibit for the 50th anniversary of the Beatles coming to America. And so we started working with him. Uh, last fall, he passed away, and his wife uh, continued the project. Uh, she's a real trooper, um, and uh, we selected the photos. She had them printed specially for the exhibit, and um, that was the impetus of the exhibit. At the same time, one of our local collectors who has donated things to the museum, to the main collection, suggested we come take a look at his collection at his house. And I walked into his house and it was completely filled with Beatles memorabilia. And it just clicked. Let's do two exhibits in one. So Rod Mandeville's collection forms the core of the second half of the exhibit. Another twist to this exhibit, and this is all done in-house, uh, the other twist is that our graduate student intern from last summer, Samantha Klink, C-L-I-N-K, uh, Samantha, who isn't a big Beatles fan, in fact, she's a big country fan and she's a 20-something, so she doesn't know much about the Beatles, but she knew that she wanted to do an exhibit for her thesis. She thought this would be a good exhibit for her that she could sink her teeth in. It would require her to do some research, some design, some fabrication, some negotiation with lenders. So that half of the exhibit is Samantha's. Um, Just as we were finalizing the design, we got a call from a collector. Actually, I called him. Uh, but I spoke with a collector in Massachusetts who collects celebrity clothing. Uh, we had a chance meeting about a year or so ago uh, at, a, at a party. And he mentioned that he had a Beatles suit. So I called him, asked him if he would loan it to the exhibition. And we had Paul McCartney's suit from 1963. Uh, D.A. Millings and Sons from London was the tailor. Dougie was the tailor to the Beatles. All of the custom suits that the Beatles wore, D.A. Millings made. Um, now, a lot of scholars say that this is a Pierre Cardin suit. Oh. It is not a Pierre Cardin suit. Pierre Cardin did design a collarless, thin-legged, skinny-armed suit in 1960 that he called the cylinder style but it didn't catch on. And then D.A. Millings undoubtedly saw the Pierre Cardin and modeled this after the Cardin. So, um, and, and with some details, uh, the piping around all the edges and the pockets, that was a D.A. Millings edition. Also, this exhibit you saw has interactives, the album covers that you can thumb through, the magazines in the living room that you can thumb through, including the TV guide from the week of the Ed Sullivan Show first appearance that you can actually look through and see what was on TV that week. Uh, live Twitter feeds and the selfies with the Beatles. So we're trying to enliven this exhibit, we're trying to make it accessible to everybody. And uh, we're just proud of it and happy that people are talking about it.